going to start voicing uh, this top. It's a, it's a Madagascar uh, H-tone dreadnought. Um, the braces are uh, pre-shaped and glued down, but we're going to we, we adjust the braces for every single guitar. The idea is uh, to end up with a certain stiffness across the grain and along the grain and when we get to that level of stiffness we want to have the most the, the, the biggest variety of distinct uh, tap tones. As you can hear this sounds pretty good and it sounds pretty lively already but it's way too stiff. Uh, normally as you can see you know there, there isn't much that goes this way in this direction for bracing so we actually thickness the top to get this close to the stiffness that we want in this direction. There's quite a bit that you, you can do to alter um, the stiffness this way and this is you know this is about about where we want it. What you want is a little bit of spring you know good spring back. You want the top to act kind of like a spring. This is not giving yet so um, but some of these other braces are a little on the large side. The other thing we want to do is we want, we want to have the lightest weight. Um, and I'm just going to go around and do what I would normally, kind of a normal treatment, you know, for, for an average top uh, before I kind of zero in on, um, um, you know, the specifics of this particular top. Try to peak, have, have, have as much of a uh, triangular cross section as possible. Uh, sort of the, with the, the grain is all running vertically. Uh, if uh, if the brace is, you know, in a triangle, it has almost as much stiffness as, as if it's square. But you can remove about a third of the weight. And as you can see, this uh, my standard bracing for um, uh, for a dreadnought is to scallop only the base side. Um, what I found is that a double scallop dreadnought can easily get boomy in the bottom end. Uh, my objective is to have a guitar that's balanced string to string, note to note. Uh, that's never 100% possible, but, um, you know, it's, it's an objective we want to shoot for, and uh, radically, a radically asymmetrical bracing uh, will, will definitely improve. Um, So we're going to take these side braces down quite a bit. As I said, it's very stiff across the grain. So I'm going to take the cross section of the bracing down, and I'll probably going to trim. And I'm, we'll probably end up trimming both ends. Again, I'm not even really tapping and flexing yet. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of making uh, some safe reduction in the bracing. Mostly using chisels and finger planes at this stage of the game. After after that, uh, someone else will come along and clean up the bracing with uh, sanding sticks and foam sanding pads. Uh, let me see. This guy is tall. We know. fat on the cross section. And this is, after most of this trimming, I'm sort of in a zone where I can kind of start to work. Um, and my, my usual approach is to 
cap and flex. Still, still too stiff here. I may end up removing some of the uh, some of this material here that'll improve the, the stiffness across this way. But I'll start tapping. So there's a variety there, which is good. So the idea, in theory, is to be able to hold it everywhere and tap everywhere, and you get great great sounds no matter where you tap it, but it never really works that way. There are certain nodal points. You, it's kind of like you know, the harmonics, make getting a harmonic on a string, you know, by touching the string at a nodal point, like above the 12th fret, and, and plucking it. This is actually, it's actually analogous to what we're doing. We're finding the resonant frequency of the brace. Um, it sounds pretty good, but she's still a little stiff. We've got to want to, we wanted to get a ring to ring a little bit, or actually a lot more before we're done. So I'm going to shorten this long brace um, because this brace is so much stouter than this brace. There's quite a bit you can do with it. Um, before getting into trouble. So I'm going to start skinnying it up and shortening the, the, the long thick part. And I'm going to maybe knock this peak, fatten the gullet on this one. Again, we have quite, we have quite a bit of stiffness in all directions as a starting point. And then I'm going to make this brace a little more triangular. I've actually removed quite a bit of material uh, just in the last, uh, in, in this operation. And I can remove a little bit more off the sides of these guys. I think of the braces uh, as marimba bars. Um, marimba makers tune each of their bars to get a fundamental tone in the first three harmonics. And you can actually kind of do that with each of the braces. Um, they scallop out the bottom, they trim the ends back. Um, where, you know, if you remove from these areas, you get one effect with harmonics. If you move from this area, so it's actually pretty analogous. There's a whole big harmonic soup going on with all these marimba bars in the top, so to speak. And there we go. That's actually sounding kind of airy and musical. Um, So the objective is to not just get a note, but to get a full sounding, musical sounding note. And I've got several holding points that I look for in a dreadnought, and these are going to be different in a smaller guitar like an OM or, a, or an O or a double O. I actually didn't trim this guy back. Um, I think you can already start to hear that the note is fuller and rounder and a little more, a little more airy. So each each of these marimba bars, so to speak, has a fundamental and harmonics, and they may be out of phase with each other. If you have the same note, uh, if you have two of the same two of the same notes that are vibrating out of phase with each other, you get cancellation. Lots of times, what happens is just changing a little bit of something will unlock that cancellation and you get two different notes instead of instead of no note. So a little bit of playing around, kind of knowing what you want to hear, uh, knowing where you can get away with removing wood without changing the structure, knowing where you have to remove the wood if you want to change the structure. Of course as you remove wood you can only make it more flexible. But 
as you remove wood, you can sometimes raise or lower pitches. It's all a matter of working, just like working your way to that point of uh, uh, having the right, the right weight, the right flexibility, and the and a and a nice mix of of overtones. Okay, now it's kind of. I've been talking here, but it's kind of adjust. It's kind of assessment time. I'm still very stiff across here. I'm pretty good down here. Very stiff here. Um, this is this is this hasn't changed too much. Sometimes I'll do this. I'm looking pretty good this way and this way. I may take a bit from here. Um, I think she's still a little on the heavy side, but let's take let's listen. Nice and full and musical. Different notes. They're distinct. As I tap over the braces. So I'm starting to get variety. I'm starting to get fullness. I'm liking that. It's really getting close to the zone of where I want to be. Nice. I like getting black keynotes, so to speak. Um, lots of times, a lot of the notes you get seem to be in the same triad. Uh, it's nice when you get really different ones. You get that adds a lot of complexity to the sound. This is actually the back of the same guitar, Madagascar rosewood back, and. Uh, I haven't started adjusting these backs, but I'll but I'll, I'll adjust the back braces t to try to achieve a bunch of the same thing. You know, a nice full sound, good variety, uh, maintain proper stiffness. You can hear it has a kind of a clangy, metallic kind of sound, typical of rosewoods. It sounds different where you hold it. But quite a bit of variety. I don't want to have to do too much to this back. And I generally don't do, I'm not as fussy with backs as I am with tops. But you can see there's quite a bit of harmonic soup going on there. It's going to blend in the back. I think of the back as kind of a sympathetic resonator. You know, um, the. Um, it complements what the top is doing. The top is the is the real deal. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm let's. I'm going to say I'm 80% where I want to be with this top. I'm going to do a little bit more, and then uh, uh, and then what I typically do is I'll move on to another one, and then I'll come back at the end and just make sure you know all of my tops are where they want to be. It's kind of nice to. Uh, take a fresh look at these things. Sometimes you get a little different insight than uh, than after you've sort of been staring at the same top for 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so this one is pretty much where I want it to be. Um, as you can see, I'm getting some spring here, some flexibility side to side. I've always had some this way. Uh, feels pretty right. I made a couple of notations of where the main nodal points are and you can hear and get some nice full sounds, two different notes there and then listen to this, three different notes there's another one down here Little couple of new notes there. A lot of repeated ones. Sometimes you get a different note if you tap on the brace and a different no a note if you tap um, 
in the space between the braces, but that's about the variety we're looking for. The H-tone tops, for some reason, seem to have a little bit less variety, but more oomph for tapping, so there we go. Here's another one. Three different, three different very distinct notes on that one. So there you have it. Another couple weeks, we'll put strings on it. <laughs>